Today's guest is Steve Nowak, who's a psychic and zero-point quantum energy practitioner who had an NDE, which connected him to the quantum field. During Steve's near-death experience, he experienced sitting in the presence of a being comprised solely of light. Steve's gift enables him to stimulate emotional and physical healing from any distance through quantum entanglement and photonics. I said that correctly. Well, welcome, Steve. How's it going? Thank you. All right. Nice to have you here. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, when I do interviews with certain people, I always come to the conclusion, or not to the, I don't come to the conclusion, I've thought about it, that people who have near-death experiences are somehow off track on their course of life, and then they're brought back to where they're supposed to, their true purpose in life, in some cases, through a near-death experience. But mm-hmm. in, in, in your case, it, you had this experience when you were young. I guess yeah, very young. Very uh, so young that uh, I couldn't really access the memories of what transpired. It's like trying to remember something that you know ha- happened, but you couldn't can't remember it. And it wasn't until that voice returned again uh, later in my life that everything came flooding in, everything I experienced, and, and things like that. So, what exactly did happen? If you can, if you can retrace those that memory or those steps. Well, my brother was on the other side of the road and he was telling him, I think I was four, it was 1979. So I was four or five. Uh, He was saying, Hey, we're going to the mall. Let's go. I was across the street. So I just fired out between two cars on a big wheel, like a little plastic tricycle in between the two cars and a car was coming down the street. So the car coming down the street hit me, um, not head on, but basically the front of the car. Then I went underneath. Wow. And then the car kept going because the lady was drinking and people on the street waved her down and stopped her. And basically what I remember from it is a blur. And then the next thing I know is I was looking at myself and my eyes were rolling in the back of my head and then everything faded into black. And then when the black opened up again, I was sitting on someone. I was leaning on someone and sitting up partially. What I thought was someone. And my head was down. And as I opened my eyes, I could see the bottom of hair. And the hair was like silvery white, luminescent almost. And it was almost touching the floor. And I could see the bottom of a robe. So I turned to see who it was. And it was this hooded figure that had no face, only light where the face should be. And I asked what happened. They said, you were in an accident. You're going to be fine. Um, They're kind of consoling me. And as this being was speaking to me, I remember thinking, we're not using our mouths, but we're speaking. So I remember noting that. And these memories, once they became available to me again, and once they started to just appear, they became more solid than like what I had for lunch last week on a Wednesday. You know, it's like something you'll never forget. Um, so they basically the being was consoling me and as this being was consoling me i'm looking at its face and i'm getting pulled in and i could feel pulled towards the face and kind of like the closer i get the more i can feel and then see and i see what i would think to be heaven you know because i'm not religious i have nothing to base it off of but there were people there old and young they were playing And you you could see like their laughter and their joy being emitted like waves of energy almost. And the colors were alive. Like all the colors were breathing and they had a life of their own. And there were so many more colors. And I instantly knew that there was no hate or suffering here. It was just ting. And then you knew, um, and I wanted to go and the being basically said it wasn't your time. It wasn't my time yet. And then that's when I was transported to what well, looked like a blueprint. What I now know is quantum field. It was like, I could see everything um, as it is like the houses, the trees, except below that was this blueprint. And then the being explained to me that we build reality on this with the energy that we create. And then they started started showing me um, like a wagon wheel or a medicine wheel. And in the middle was a beam of light. Wow. And they said, in the middle, you are this beam of light and you're pure. 
and you are the energy of love, that's your identity. And then you spend your energy out into the rim of this wheel to experience and cycle reality through your energetic system. Um, then they talked about getting those pieces of our soul or pieces of our energy back that we leave out there in past identities and old relationships and things like that. And they, they kind of taught me to really look at it like a computer, like you're absorbing data and programs and you need to cleanse or clear your, your programs and your hard drive and that your waking consciousness was like the operating system. Um, yeah. A few, a few other things, but I don't know if you want to jump in at all. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's hear it. Um, let's see what else. Um, just an instant knowing that everything was one and everything came from one. Um, they also explained that all living beings have a blueprint or humans have a blueprint in the quantum field. And the way they explained it to me was it was kind of like a root file on a computer. Right. It was, it was clean and it was perfect and it was written exactly the way it was supposed to be. But human beings have to claim it. It's, it does, and I guess for me, I don't know what happened, whether I connected to that space or not by being brought there. Right, right. But I didn't, I didn't seem to claim it. It's like everything just sort of happened to me. Yeah, um, there's, there's so, many, so many different stories in between that in, ter in terms of yeah. seeing the other side and being teased with something that looked actually inviting. Mm -hmm. And for most, most, of, most of the time, people who have the near-death experience always explain they wanted to go to this place, which seemed comforting and seemed alive, even more real yeah. than this reality. And, uh, and the other that's, thing... That that's you, how I feel about it now. It's even more real than, than the physical reality to me. How's that, how's that possible? Like, how, does that, how, does, how do you differentiate? Me, all, for me, it all starts with energy. Like everything is created from energy or from our heart. So if my energy's off one day, then I'm probably creating a crappy day. So it's like, for me, that's the baseline and where everything starts. So I know if there's low energy here, density or high energy here, that there's going to be different experiences. So it's, it's just like that world to me seems to be more prevalent, even though I lived pretty normal for a good 20 years or so which was beneficial um in kind of being able to integrate that at first like i said i had the accident young and then the voice returned right. um, they returned during a surgery that i was having um on my elbow for a car accident another car accident that i had um and when, when this returned it basically like reconnected everything and this energy just grew inside of me and i kind of understood it to be some type of charge and um, that's when everything got really wacky and i was able to start to see this type of wagon wheel scenario except in real time wow, wow, wow. so integrating that was really hard like i thought i was nuts at first to be honest with you because i was i knew something happened different to me at four but i couldn't get there and i couldn't remember what so once i finally once it finally started to happen it was a lot and there were days a lot of days where i'd be doing something and i could see silhouettes passing all around me of like figures and some were lighter energy some were dark and it took me a while out to figure out those were my projections into the quantum field and they were semi-intelligent. They contained a basically a small slice of consciousness that I had created to interact with reality, a, a different version of myself, if you will. Yeah, yeah, wow. Um, in quantum. So I had to figure out how to cause these to dissipate or transmute or transform. And I could only do that by becoming accountable and changing my energy. But first I had to get through all the like psychic stuff because I didn't believe in psychic stuff. I didn't believe in any of this stuff. So um, hearing people's thoughts, feeling their feelings, um, just tons of stuff. Just knowing all this stuff about quantum mechanics that you didn't know you knew how. 
Right, and right. I was like very lost and lonely. My family wanted me to see a shrink because all of a sudden I started reading books about God and totally changed who I was. So I had to integrate that with the old me and it wasn't working out for a while. So, you know, you go through your trials and you figure out, okay, I have something. I just have to heal the part of myself to give it back to others, to move myself out of the way, you know? What was, what was the age difference between the, the time you were four years old to the time you had the elbow surgery where that memory came back to you? And yeah. then you, yeah. Uh, I believe the elbow surgery was in like my early thirties. So when you yeah. were in your, so you were in your thirties, then the recollection of, I guess, being under was bringing back that, that recall of when well, you were four? The, the strange thing was I didn't actually go under yet. I was in the waiting room before they came in to bring me my meds and I got very anxious and anxious to the fact where I was like, I was overwhelmed with, with uh, wanting to get up and leave. And, and I was literally a split second from doing so. And it was like this energy had just sat me down wow. and this calm and this peace came over me. And that's when the voice said, everything's going to be all right. And it was the, I've recognized it as soon as it said it, that was the same voice from when I was four. And then that's when all this energy started to basically, I don't want to say overtake me, but that's a lot like how it was. Right, it, was right. uh, it was peaceful and it was like, I knew everything would be okay um, in an instant. And then there was a few experiences aside from that um, where I was driving in my car and I was, I was having an interaction because at this point now I'm starting to hear spirits and they're kind of whispery. They're kind of hard to hear. And I'm trying to tune it out and really adjust to being a normal person still, holding on to that part of myself. Um, so I had to tune and adjust that. During this part, it, it got really intense. And I had to learn how to let go of some of the dense energies and heal, heal the things I was still holding on to in order to move forward and allow this part of myself to come out, put it that way. Yeah, so it's like almost like reinventing yourself so to speak i guess your ego is in a place of who you know yourself to be from the, from the time you're four years old to the time you're 30 and then now you're saying wait a minute you know how do i change does my family accept me do the people around me accept me and then you get you become lonely i guess in some capacity so what, yeah it was definitely isolating yeah what is life like from the age of four to the age of 30 in terms of as you developed into going to school in terms of your profession prior to doing healing well, I mean, I would say it was pretty normal, um, normal childhood. I mean, there were issues, of course, of abandonment and other things to work through. Um, but I would say for the most part, pretty normal. I wouldn't say I was the best person, but I wasn't a bad person. Um, right. But to me, I wasn't worthy of love. I wasn't worthy of feeling that feeling. But when it entered me again, I knew that was home and I knew I had been there before and I knew it was something that if I touched and I felt and I was worthy of feeling again, um, despite all my mistakes, then everybody's worth, worthy of feeling it. And I was like, if I could show them how, if I could do something and that's when the healing abilities started to appear basically. Yeah, um, what what age were you when that started? When you were when you recognized it to be? I was right around the time when that voice returned. Um, I mean, within months, everything started to happen. Um, uh -huh. I was a store manager at GameStop, and I had my own store, and I was I was a pretty normal guy at the time. Um, so a woman fell outside my store. An elderly woman fell on the concrete, and she was in pain. And for some reason, I put my hand on her back, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, divine divine uh, confirmations but anyway right so when right. I did that she looked at me and she said I'm all warm and I don't have any pain and then I remember EMTs came a few minutes after I went back to work and I was just thinking about it and thinking about it and I'm putting that together with all my other experiences um having like I would walk through a scenario there was a scenario where I went to a gas station and I'm standing in line and I see this kid ask his dad for a piece of candy. He turns to his dad, asks him, dad says, okay. And then the kid does it again, again, but he's, 
he's only asking for one and he's doing it the same exact way. So I'm like, that was really weird. Uh, so I go back to my car, I start the car. It's a woman on the radio. She's winning a contest. Uh, she's already won. She's talking to the people. And then all of a sudden the phone is ringing and it's the woman and they're asking her the question. And I had already heard the answer. Wow. It was almost, it was like I was going in and out of some different time, time space. Time, yeah. Time space. Wow. And right there, I was like thinking, you're going to have to go to the hospital, dude, and check yourself in because I had to go back to work. So what I did was I went to a church and I tried to go to every church I could find to talk to people. And nobody could tell me what was going on. I knew it had to be something to do with God, but not God as people understood it, you know? Right, right. Do you, do you, when you're going through this experience, do you feel like you're from here, but not from here? Yeah, it felt very foreign. It was almost like as I was integrating, it felt like some of the things that I was doing, I was doing for the first time. Yeah. It yeah. was like doing things with the joy of a child in your heart and you're experiencing it for the first time, even though I had done it before. Right, right. I mean, I've had, was, I've, I've, I've had energy work done and I know that, that, that feeling of euphoria of your heart opening and yeah. in terms of that feeling of feeling present, but from at a higher energetic vibration. I just I wanted to touch upon something else you said, which was interesting, because I heard an interview of a woman who was in Sedona, who was in a medicine wheel that was in the Sedona, like desert, you know, area that was a little bit off the off the beaten uh, trail. Mm -hmm. And she and she lied in the in the medicine wheel and, and had made contact with an alien ship at that particular point. Wow. So, I, so I, I, when, when you mention a being of beings of light, she also saw a being of light that came off of a ship, mm -hmm. you know, at a very high vibration. Uh, and uh, I thought it was interesting because is it easy to make out if it's angelic or it is just a light form or a high vibrational extraterrestrial, so to speak? Uh, for me, it's been by feeling and it's been by just like adding up confirmations. Like no matter what I what I would do, I could not avoid angels. I could not avoid God. It was like it would show up in everything written around me. It would show up in every TV, radio, and there was confirmation after confirmation. And as I'm getting the confirmations and they seem to be more present in my reality, it would come with a feeling and they would feel different than other beings. Wow. Like I didn't believe in aliens either, dude. And hell, I'm like, I'm eating a bowl of Cheerios one day and Arcturians show up and I could feel them and I could hear them, but I couldn't see them. And when I heard them, they were crystal clear. You know, there was no loss in transmission. Like sometimes spirits try to reach you and there's, it's faint. It wasn't anything like that. So they told me about the Galactic Federation they told wow. me about the divine council and they said I was a part of that. And they talked about, you know, the evolution of humanity, which confirmed what the being of light said to me at four, which was some of the talk was about ascension and the evolution for humanity and that they would be back basically. So the Arturians confirmed a lot of stuff because at the time of meeting Cheerios, I'm like, yeah, yeah, go away, whatever. I thought it was just a spirit egging me on because at that time I was still trying to learn how to adjust right. to allowing things in and out. So I looked, looked it up on the internet, you know, as soon as they got done speaking, I looked everything up and I'm finding it and I'm reading and I'm finding it. And that was my first, I guess you could say contact. Then they came back again and spoke a little more in depth. And sometimes in healing sessions, I will see them enter through like a stargate and assist um, not only them but other races so before then i was a skeptic you know i, yeah, I have absolutely. to experience yeah this is a real big bowl of cereal to try to digest for a lot of people in terms of understanding i mean once a person yeah. goes down that pathway of that rabbit hole of opening up to to the universe it, i mean information is i guess endless and yeah, it's like that other there's another 97 percent of light that we can't see with our eyes you but know. yet you had that opportunity through your experience. It's interesting. I, I do Akashic Record readings. Um, mm -hmm. And through the readings, I mean, I know our vibration, our thoughts, our actions, uh, our words, right? They reverberate to the astral plane, to the Akasha. 
And yeah. I was wondering if in terms of your seeing your own energy actually reverberate out of yourself, as you said, based upon your emotions, if that was like the beginning of the energy leaving to actually go there, but then you're able to see it to try to reorganize it so that it's structured in a way that comes back to you and you could control your, your day. Yeah, it's, it's, that, that sounds very familiar because it's almost like you're, you're restructuring that data. So, that, and you're so you are the opportunity. Yeah, you had the opportunity to see the data before it hit a place where it would embed itself and create a right. situation. Wow, that's so interesting. And, and now, when I work with with clients, I can speak to this energy because I see it as data, and it has to move if you have a high enough charge, a high enough frequency, and actually gather the data together, you know, as a program and uninstall it. And we can command the quantum field and claim our divine blueprint and enter in and use our word and claim divine love as a program to be installed. And a lot of times I can feel the other dense energy leave and I'll feel a little space and then I could feel the other, other divine energy enter and integrate with their field. Um, but it's interesting. It's a game of energy, you know. Yeah, when you say uh, feel, do you see it in a holographic sense, or do you actually feel it in your body? Sometimes I can see it in my third eye when I close, uh, have my eyes closed, but right. I more or less feel it like there were a touch screen in my center, in my solar plexus, and it's like I can feel the different the weight of the different frequencies as they pass through. Right, right. I mean, I'm familiar with doing Reiki and distance Reiki myself in terms of the energy. I had an experience mm -hmm. myself where I was suffering from Lyme, Lyme disease and other types of things. I saw a healer. He told me, you know, you could do this type of work. And I didn't understand it at the time. I opened myself up. I felt that energy. I saw different things. I saw auras and the whole, Yeah. I mean, different aspects. Uh, I, I don't have the depth of that feeling, but I do feel empathic towards other people's, you know, feelings and where they have certain things going on. But to have it at the level or the, you know, the, the, the extent and, you know, in different, like going to public school and going to high, junior high school or going to college and going off for your master's or PhD, there's different levels of that absorption of what you can feel and, and then, you know, recite back to the, the client. How do you... Um, so what is like a healing session doing? What exactly when you, are you doing when you're connecting to the quantum field? Um, basically, when I have a client, I'll, I'll have them sit down and I'll have them go through some steps to connect to what I call the Trinity circuit, which was something that was revealed, revealed to me. Also during my NDE was the Holy Spirit, which is the same as pure spirit. The Christ, to me, became the same as the law of one. The same as the Buddha, the same as the Krishna, the same as what I call the singularity of love. So I help my clients basically connect to the circuit of life force energy. And this allows them to align and expand. Um, I ask um, the Holy Spirit to enter their consciousness, Christ to expand within them, God to surround them. And we're looking to form a field, a field of the higher self by connecting the circuit. Um, then I guide them through basically first embodying the charge, creating the charge, and then using the charge and their will to command their healing to happen, to command the lower negative charges stored in cellular memory, stored in subconscious, to obey them. And I stress upon them to see their disease as separate than them, um, to see themselves as the energy of love, in a human body, having a human experience, but you're not that disease, you're not that feeling unless you attach to it. So I try to really foster that mindset of unattachment. What's so interesting, but, uh, yeah, what just I don't want to cut just short, just want to just something crossed my mind. What's interesting mm -hmm. is the fact is, is that your near death experience was exactly that detachment from your body and soul. Yeah. Is, I guess you're mimicking, not mimicking, you're, you're replicating that particular feeling of deal, dealing with the fact that you are separate from your soul and your body is separate. That's exactly what I do is I replicate feelings from memories. And, wow, 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 wow. And I can recreate the charge and then use quantum entanglement to create that same vibration in the other person, no matter their distance. 
So, and, and I've got to the point where I've done enough work on myself. It wasn't like it just happened overnight. It was like, I had to dedicate myself to years of being alone in nature and choosing better things than I chose in the past and things like that to carry enough of a charge to have it affect someone, you know, hundreds of miles away. And then took time to learn about what was happening there too, you know. How do you know that the charge that you rep, that you generate is n- not too strong or not too weak for the client you're working with? For that, I trust God, and I know everything will be be coming in its uh, divine uh, timing, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and, that's I, a- and it's almost like there's going to be a space of them that's open to a certain amount where it's only going to allow a certain amount in and a certain amount of integration. Um, a lot of clients will start yawning or belching. Um, and that's a way to transmute and basically transform the energy that we store, uh, exit it really fast. Yeah. It's a uh, very interesting. I mean, there's different forms. And so you're, you're practicing, uh, you're, you're practicing Ursai Reiki. I, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Well, correctly. it'd be, Isui Reiki was the first Reiki that I studied to Reiki okay. master. Right. And then it eventually graduated the more I studied into zero point Reiki. And that's where you can bring someone's nervous system into a maximum ground state. And the realities and the different selves and the different trauma that we hold in our subconscious are what keep us grounded. So that's the reason why we want to work with zero point is because it ungrounds us from all these other um, false realities and brings us back into neutral motion, basically. Was this some of the information that was was gifted to you during your NDE? Some was gifted. uh, A lot was researched. And then a lot was researched because I would be gifted it in my mind or in my spirit where I would feel it and I would have to go search for it. Um, to just kind of figure out what was going on, you know? So, so it was relatable. Oh yeah, for sure. It was things I would hear, you know, in my head, it was things I would see and come across during my day. And I'm like, Hmm, I'm going to, I'm going to look into that. I'm being guided to that. Um, so Maybe. just confirmations and, and I'm talking in the thousands like, yeah. Do you operate on the bio fo- photons in terms of seeing the aura of the of the of a client, or how does how do you operate using the bio fo- bio? Um, That's photons? basically what I'm doing is sending bio photons, but I'm applying my will to it. And what I say by that, uh, I mean will and faith. I mean believing in something. Believing something has already already happened, even though you know it hasn't happened yet. And when right. you convincing your mind that it's already real okay it already happened i'm asking for it but it already happened i'm already i'm just accepting it now and as you work with that feeling of knowing like okay you know if you have a dog you have to take the dog for a walk right you know you know how to tie your shoes you know you know how to ride a bike and when you work with that feeling of knowing and you start to be able to replicate it and use that knowing to know that you're healing, to know that physical pain is leaving your body, to know it into being is the powerful signal you want to apply. What was the turning point going from being, you know, in, in, I wouldn't say intermediate, but having a, you know, like a, a novice feel about it and turning it into the profession that you do now? Like, how did that, what was, what did, yeah. (laughs) Oh gosh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll probably always have the novice feel to it because it's like I built it from the ground up. It's like I was put in the uh, put in the position, and then I felt like okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna show up, but I wasn't really showing up. So it was like for a while, I felt I didn't deserve to be in that position. So it took a while to integrate allowing myself to be seen that way by other people right because i'm like i'm nobody special you can do this you can do this i'm just seeing things to tell people what they're capable of um so it took a while for that to wear off and probably in the last two to three years 
I've had such a confidence after witnessing everything that I have that this is pretty much all I live for. It's like I'm dedicating my life to this, to leave clean, to leave a clean slate behind, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think each, everybody goes to that imposter syndrome. So, yeah. It took a while to, yeah. Imposter syndrome is right. It took a while to know myself. Right. Right. And then be able to hold on to that. Right. When, when other people were trying to tell me who I was. Or... Well, their reality of who they thought you were, as opposed to who you thought yourself to be. Right. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, you know, you, you, you know, you find life to be almost like a cyclical thing and people say, Oh, I thought you knew how to do that already. And I, you know, you're going around in circles, but each time you're increasing the, the depth of, of that, of that cycle. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like sometimes if I'm doing an Akashic record reading, I'll say to myself, how did I know that? How did that information come to me? And because it's not physically tangible, it becomes something that is so like, you know, not out there, but something that you have to just have that, as you said, that will and that fate in what mm -hmm. you're doing to just say, I do this and this is what I'm good at. And uh, I, I, for myself, and maybe you could just elaborate on it. I mean, were there times where when you did it there, the clients weren't as, uh, as ready, readily available as they are now? Or was there a time where oh. you were? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, there, there was a time when I thought, Hey, I don't want to do this. And right. that was many, many years ago. And there was times where I'd be like, what's the point of me having all this information and nobody wants to hear it? What's the right, point? Right, right, right. You know, so many different roadblocks. But I was like the the false me, the lower self trying to defeat me. You know, and I wasn't going to be defeated. But what was the what was the motivation to keep at it? To keep at it? I'd say for a while, it was I wanted to prove everybody wrong. Because okay. it was like, after awakening, and everything I was experiencing, right? My family thought I was going loopy. Um, basically, my family's gone, my ex is gone, my child gone. And it was like, my motivation at first became to prove everybody wrong. And then it became to just feel more of the love that I was feeling by growing in my relationship with my creator. And it started to be reconnecting to all the spaces that I didn't, wasn't able to feel in my youth and reconnecting to those higher frequencies. And then it became wanting to show others because I just wanted to leave people with that love. Like when I left, I want them to remember Christ and have that for themselves. And then that became my motivation. It was like I was redeemed. So I wanted to tell other people, hey, you can do this too. How do you, how do you, how do you, what kind of advice do you offer those who are on this path, mm -hmm. didn't, didn't have a near death experience, um, don't have the deeper insights to the quantum world or the quantum field itself? but have the desire, as most people say, everybody has the, the ability to give energy off or, or, mm -hmm. or perform Reiki. Um, but in, in your case, like the path is, is as, you, as we're speaking before and speaking now is lonely at, at, yeah. at some point. Could yeah, you and you need, I think you need that time to reconnect because with all these other people's energies coming in and out, you're never gonna take that time to learn how to feel again in a safe space and allow yourself to open up and then have right. that relationship with creation because it's a lot richer. It's a lot better experience. It's a lot more peaceful. Yeah. Would you say that the, that spirit, the spirit world sends you more clients or has sent you more clients knowing that you're more capable first off. And secondly, you have the energy to actually withstand being drained from, from the experience itself. I would say definitely I've had people, send me some crazy messages like oh this happened oh i was scrolling <laughs> through this and your name was said in my head or this was said or i had a vision of this and just wild things where when i read it i don't even believe it i'm like i'm just a person that got hit by a car you know what i mean whatever comes through me comes through me um, yeah but i think each person that has these experiences has a, an important message to to share with the world and also to then have a profession that impacts 
the lives of people on a very significant in a significant way. Uh, yeah, I think it's you, something something good to give back. As far as capable, I think they do it that they're guided to me because they know my energy is clean and they know I'm honest and they know my heart is in it. Right, right, right. How how does when you said you heard these specific uh, voices that were speak, speaking to you or sharing mm-hmm. information with you, uh, how were you able to differentiate between what was coming from from what? From the Arcturians, from the Lemurians, if there's, you know, whichever group, the, the Greys. You know, it's interesting. I was lying in bed. I had COVID like a couple of years ago, and I heard the voice. I heard a voice say, Psalm 30. Mm-hmm. And I'll... I didn't, I never read Psalm 30. I opened up Psalm 30. I've been reading it ever since. So that was impactful for me. And I heard, I don't, yeah. I don't know whose voice it was. I mean, I've hear certain voices at different times myself with information. Uh, but that would be like maybe four, four six, six, seven o'clock in the morning after I've slept mm-hmm. and woke up and went back to bed. Yeah. All right. So like when you're hearing the information, when do you hear it? Is there a time? Uh, Is there a place? anytime half of the time it's like the peanut gallery is in my head and they're having fun and there's humor and i'm laughing really and it's almost like (laughs) being a part of that world as you're in this one yeah they're they're humorous they're very humorous jokes and all that um but as far as discernment right for me it took a lot of time to learn by feeling and also what was being said and the type of words used the type of language, things like that, and the type of feeling behind it. When I thought about it in my head, what do I feel within me? Um, So after a while, it became figuring out different signals. One would be higher than the other. One would be heavier. One would be lighter. And that's a game of weights and measures here. You're figuring out what's heavy and light and how to not be bound by the heavy darkness, the heavy energy you know, and how to go from light to dark at will, because the whole experience is about light and dark. It's not like you can have just the experience with just light. You need to contrast, but you don't need to be bound by it. You know what I mean? So that's part of our spiritual journey is figuring out how to become light again and not be bound by the dark. That's where transmutation comes in. And how do you transmute the energies? Uh, you basically order it to come together as one charge. Um, you speak to your consciousness. You claim that space back, that sacred space, because we're like antennas. And we have so many different signals we're picking up and coming in and going out. And so many fields around us. You want to claim that space as sacred, as holy, as love. And then you want to speak to your identities that you kind of have projecting out into the quantum field, vibrating at different rates and all your trauma and your timelines, everything stored in your body, your cellular memory, your subconscious to come together as one charge. What's going to happen is this is going to create polarity. Then you want to use that light to basically speak to your physical ailments, your emotional ailments, um, clear yourself of any blockages, and this helps re- rewrite the neural pathways yeah. uh, for neuroplasticity. Have you, through, the, through these experiences and through your work, uh, have you had the desire to take care of yourself personally more, on a more physical and emotional level? Or do you feel that you get satisfaction enough from dealing, helping your clients? No way, for sure. I've connected a lot more to hiking and nature. And, and I used to play sports a lot when I was young but I had a lot of car accidents. And in my early twenties, I was addicted to pain medication just to be able to function and go to work, you know, and I was pretty rough and I didn't even realize it until I look back now and I take nothing. I rely solely on cleansing my system right. and commanding it and using my will and my word to keep dense energy and low energy out of my system. So back then, Um, back then I was, I was so tied up in bondage that I didn't realize it. I think I was going somewhere else with that, but I might've lost track. I, 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 I'm very interested. I do a little shamanic work and, uh, clearing out the, you know, the energetic field with actually an Mm -hmm. egg 
running the egg through the over the skin and removing the the oh, I've seen that I think yeah yeah and, and and you know that's that's closer to the body obviously a little farther away is is taking also energy out through the chakras uh, mm -hmm. I do a lot of d deep breathing uh, and you know visualizing colors and removal and stuff like that in terms of uh, telling someone or offering like advice or information uh, to help a person uh, self care for their energetic body, what would be your advice to them? I would say definitely meditation with breath work, but you have to make it a pattern. It can't be inconsistent. You have to form those patterns and allow the pattern to be formed all the way down your neural pathways and make a marker, you know, every other day, every other, every day and speak to your disease, speak to your emotional problems. Take yeah. that space back and understand that you deserve that space, that these other identities um, that are in it aren't really you, that you can take that space back and not to identify with any disease or any ailment or anything you're going through. Identify yourself as the energy of love, having a human experience. You're not the experience itself. You're having the experience. So connecting with meditation, doing activities that you used to love to do when you were young, going out into nature. Um, for some people, it can be art. For other people, it can be shooting guns. Whatever reconnects you with that youthful feeling. Yeah, and yeah. I, I mean target shooting. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean whatever reconnects you with that youthful feeling, like when you were a kid on Christmas Eve night and you couldn't sleep, like when you were 15 and you were getting ready to go out on a Friday night with friends and those type of feelings. Um, also talking to your inner child, reconnecting with your inner child, sending your inner child love, asking your inner child to become one with you will bring back a lot of that youthful energy calling all of your multidimensional selves, all of your energy back into this time, into the now is also a good pick me up. It'll bring your energy back into a more condensed fashion to where you don't feel so scattered. Right, right. Well, I, I could definitely relate to the inner child work um, because through shamanism and through my own life and through working with clients, it always reverts back to a time and space in terms of when they were where the wound started and how that disconnect takes place from cutting off yourself from the, you know, the waist down mm -hmm. and thinking you have to live from the waist up. And I know, I know for myself and which has been helpful to offer, like you just said, becoming more playful and finding those playful moments and reverting back to things I did playing ice hockey now and just things I was interested in, trying to reconnect yeah, with like hockey jerseys. <laughs> yeah, going to do things because I want to do them as opposed for any other reason, just because I'm feeling it right now. Like last year, I wanted to go up to Salem and check out Salem, Mass. So right. instead of waiting and waiting and waiting, I just went and did it. And, you know, I'm not a big traveler on my own. Right. But I went and did it and it helped me not only express that authentic emotion in the now, but break a whole bunch of barriers on the way there. Of, uh, of my emotions that were tied to certain events, you know? Were you shown any past life experiences or revisited any past life experiences from this particular uh, reincarnation of things that yeah, are tied I, together? I've had quite a few confirmations. I think the first one might have been the most significant because I was having a rough time breaking down, going through all that psychic, whatever you want to call it, where I'm starting to see into the field and feel things and I had all this information and it's like, it was all I wanted to talk about. It was, you know, it was becoming me and my ex didn't want to hear it. My former girlfriend and nobody wanted to hear it. So I'm like begging God to show me why, like what's happening. Right. Is this something I've lived before? Is this past life? If it is show me. And I was kneeling down and I was praying at a, cross i had over there and this is when i was brought to a vision of my feet and i'm looking down and i can see my feet walking and they're in sandals i can see the bottom of a tunic and i'm walking on a sandy road and it's 
so crystal clear it's more clear than our reality like you could see every speckle of light wow. on every grain of sand and i'm walking on this dirt road and i look over to my left and there's two rivers and they're coming into one and i look over here and there's another river and they're all coming into one and i'm, I'm walking and i'm looking out of my eyes so i see like my tunic and then it ends and I look it up on my phone. I'm like, three rivers coming into one. And it was the, Euph it was, uh, the Euphrates, I think, where the, the Red Sea parted. And now I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't even know if it's real. But it happened. I had the vision. I felt something. Um, so this knowledge is coming from somewhere because it's like it's just springing up. So that was when I first started to actually believe, hey, maybe past lives are real. And then started to understand later, they were like fragments that get recycled. Right. Um, and then there was a couple others that I found out about, like the Civil War. And it was just by like experiencing certain feelings and confirmations as you're watching the material or something's happening. Um, I figured out I was a Midwestern housewife, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, and just like uh, a couple other ones, but the most significant was probably, oh, there was a, a king of a minor country that got killed by a woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For do doing magic or something like that. But yeah, I, I can I can relate so quite a few different ones. Yeah, I can relate to the fact of the uh, relationships turning sour once you recognize that you're at a different frequency and you realize that people are not going to be able to match that frequency and it becomes lonely. Uh, yeah. It's like you're embodying certain ideals and certain feelings and you want to engage in things that keep those present and nobody else wants to engage in those same things because they're not in that frequency. Well, the, each, each person's in their own chakra, right? At a certain yeah. level. And if the person's at a higher frequency in their crown or in their, in their third eye, and a person's stuck in their root chakra, then there's no balancing of, of understanding. And I, I you know, I, I've gone through that and I go through that and uh, you become the teacher and the other person becomes the student, but then sometimes it becomes frustrating because it's, it, yeah. Um, my pet, it's interesting. I had past lives from World War II as a doctor in the concentration camps. And I lived that experience actually in this life, not, not being a doctor, but living in Germany, marrying a German woman, speaking German wow. fluently and having done a Reiki session with a client actually got up from the chair and said, I remember you. And I said, where? From the camp, concentration camps. Wow. And I was because I had issues with with breathing from like a vent. If I looked at a vent in the ceiling in my workplace, it was setting off mm -hmm. a panic attack and asthma. Yeah. And, and all of these things that I went through were for me to remember where I came from. That's pretty wild. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's for me, uh, one of them was a plane crash. Um, and I'm not sure if it was World War Two or World War One. I'm thinking one. But uh, that happened where I started to feel panicky and emotions. And when I was watching plane crashes, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? Just yeah, like you right. described. So interesting. But then you experience the near death experience, which once a person goes through this experience, I assume then life becomes uh more livable in some capacity think. <laughs> okay in some capacity right yeah you would you would think well how does it become more livable once but, you become accountable okay because it's almost like it increased my sensitivity so everything i was creating if i denied that that part of myself existed or denied myself it was rough right if i accepted all of it and became accountable then it was it's much easier now um when, you say, that, when you say accountable, account, when you say accountable, when you say accountable to the energy of love. Okay. I think, I think, I, as I mentioned before, we, we got on the show, I said to you that uh, specifically, and for me, and for many people, probably in the audience, the, the holiday season, the holiday times is a real test of a person's mm -hmm. ability to open up their heart or, or keep their heart closed. Mm -hmm. and, and it and and the, the more we tighten up to try to c control the situation obviously the more pain we feel so what would be your advice in terms of how to open up the heart and that end of it how to deal with the forgiveness 
my advice would be to speak to what you know to be as creator if you question or second guess whether there is one just try it hey god show me what love feels like show me what this feels like show me what this feels like because everybody deserves to feel it and it is in the field and we can basically ask god source however you refer to god to start allowing us to feel these feelings again um i ask love to enter my center i ask it to expand and i ask it to expand a few times until that feeling becomes me um, because it's what you're made out of we're never going to forget this on a, a spiritual level we may forget it on a physical level but when you're asking to be become one or be filled with that energy you want to ask with that again that faith that you know you're already a part of it and uh yeah. reconnecting with love is also reconnecting with the memories that made you feel peaceful um and, and not necessarily related to people but the experiences you know you do your breath work you remember the places and the experiences that you were grateful for and you start giving thanks and a lot of times for me by giving thanks to the trees to the grass to the water by just going down that laundry list of whatever's popping up in my mind to give thanks for right. this increases my charge and it's a game of charges you're looking to increase your charge um anyway yeah no i understand that i that's that 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 that, that feeling you get when that as you said before the playful childlike energy that increases yeah. that you're told as a child to you know yeah and just work on having you returning your energy to the state of being of peace and love yeah and then you'll be guided when to open your heart to other people you know you'll naturally link up how at this point now what are you working on uh other than the work you're doing is there anything you're working on specifically like a book or any type of you know? working on a book it's coming together it seems to be coming together like everything else in in, in pieces of material that I will write and then put down and then go right again and then put down and then go right yeah, again yeah. until it until it's right. Um, and I kind of decide how I want it to be. So there's definitely a lot of writing has been done. Um, I'm doing a lot of podcast interviews, uh, a lot of things like that. And pretty much appearing wherever I can, uh, just putting myself out there, so to speak. Yeah, and then of course doing the healing work and coaching. If uh, somebody wanted to uh, reach out to you, where could they? Where where would it be best to reach out to you? Uh, you can send me an email at trinityhealingreiki dot com. That's R E I K I Reiki, Trinity Healing Reiki. I'm sorry, not dot com. Trinity Healing Reiki at gmail dot com. I'll put that or up. Or you so can go to my website. Okay, cool. You can you know, go to my website at trinityquantumhealth.com as well. And there's information on there. That's trinityquantumhealth.com. And if, if you could leave us like with a little lasting message or something for the future in terms of not maybe what you know or maybe what insight you have mm -hmm. or how we can best handle the coming months, years from your perspective. I would say the best thing we can do is to realign with our higher feelings and feed that self rather than feed the lower self that breeds competition, separation, and suffering. We have to feed ourselves and create the type of emotions that breed oneness and unity and compassion for each other. Uh, if we're going to evolve as a species and basically ascend in consciousness, um, we have to return to mind heart coherence reconnect our mind with our heart you know because we've become so disconnected um yeah but that's kind of like for the future we're going to ascend basically into beings that are more dependent on energy um than matter of one day in the future but the way to do it is to get that mind and the heart working together not against each other which is the hardest journey for most people from the brain to the heart, but I guess that's mm -hmm. the key. 
Yeah. One of the things I saw in my NDE was there's information banding from say my solar plexus up into my neural interface up to my mind. And there's different band waves of information passing through. So we speak to these band waves and we tell them to uninstall and that they're disabled and we reprogram ourselves for divine love in that space. And we take back that bandwidth. But anyway. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting to me. I, I, I get a little bit of it. Um, so I'd, I'd like to thank you, Steve, for joining me tonight and the sharing your wisdom, your inspiring information and your life experience and the ability to, uh, to live through something, make something out of it and to pass on information to have other people uh, ascend and grow from, from your experience. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I was glad to be here. Glad to uh, share the space with you. Uh, I just want people to feel the love that I was able to feel, not only at four, but later in my life. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.